So guys, today we're going to be doing a nice, fun backpack, kind of survival kit, but really an Alaskan bug out bag. Just because I haven't done any fun, kind of survival-ish videos in a little while, I wanted to mix it up. So that is what we're getting into today. And before we get started, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you aren't already. Now, let's get into this. So like I mentioned, today we're going to be going over my kind of bug out bag setup, as well as the two pieces of gear that I would carry on body. So before we get into this whole setup here, I do want to note the two things that would be on body are a solid field knife, and this one is the Ambush Knives Alpha in CPM 3V. This is a very solid belt knife, and I really do love running it. The other thing, of course, would be the handgun, and... <laughs> There's my backpack just fell over, but this is a Glock 21. Of course, it'd be fully loaded, just like it is now, but this is a Glock 21, and that is a 45 ACP Glock. And so those would be the two things that would be on body with this kit. So now, let's get into this kit. Okay, guys, so I moved you a little bit closer so that you can more see what this whole kit is like. So, of course, for those who don't know, the basis of this kit or the backpack that it's all on is the Camelback Lynchpin. This is a really great multi-day assault backpack. It's been on many, many adventures. This is my by far my most favorite, most beloved, most used backpack uh, ever. And once again, it is definitely a user. It's been to many places all over Alaska and it's been in a lot of situations where it could have been easily destroyed but it withstood the test of time with only a few damages. So anyways, now let's get into how this thing's set up. So one of the reasons why this thing is topsy-turvy, the reason this uh, pack setup is so topsy-turvy and you notice it wants to fall down is because I'm running a sleeping bag on the bottom. So I'm gonna remove this and this is gonna be the first piece of kit. And what I use is I just use some straps, just basic nylon straps with these little, with these little dividers or whatever you call these things. I'm not sure what you call these, but that's what I'm using to strap it to the bottom of this backpack. And it's just a basic sleeping bag for staying out overnight. And that is going to be pretty important because with a bug out bag, you just have to get up and go. It's essentially the kind of idea to it. So the first compartment down here is just very basic medical stuff. It's actually pretty empty as you guys can see, but there is some basic medical stuff and it's primarily gauze in these uh, different containers. This one is plastic and you guys can see there, pretty neat container, but it just holds gauze and that's basically what fills this entire area is gauze. And that is for basic cuts, basic scrapes, anything that's very basic medical that needs to be repaired or if you still need to, you know, cover your area that got cut or whatever, this is, or you use gauze. So at least I use gauze. So that's what's in this pouch here. So the next pouch is this one here. And in this one, it's primarily focused on just the different personal things I'm gonna be using. Once again, I noted that I had a belt knife, but I wanted to have a pack belt knife just in case I had to replace that one or if I needed to swap one out or if I had to loan one out. Uh, I wanna have two different belt knives. So the next one is a Pull Force November one. This one's a little bit more tactical than the other, but Either way, they're both very solid. Both the Alpha and the Prepper one are both very solid belt knives, field knives. And so this is the one that runs on the path. Next to that, I have a very basic Mora Eldris for a neck knife. Just overall for crafts, game prep, and a lot of basic woods tasks because in my bug out type of situation I think like most people I would try and make my way into the woods and of course you want stuff that's going to help you with the woods. So aside from that in here there's just a whole bunch of more personal kind of items things that you use to equip yourself so that you're better prepared for survival overall and so the first piece or the next piece that's not kind of related to personal items is a fire box. This is just a bush box by Bushcraft Essentials. This is a bush box LF. 
So that is very nice for a couple of the other elements. I have some stainless steel in here. So for cooking and doing very small scale uh, cook work and just cooking small things, it'd be nice to use the Bush box. Aside from that, I have a pair of mechanics gloves here. Of course, those will be pretty important. You're gonna be covering a lot of rough material and you never know what you have to grab or just what all and mechanics gloves are really nice so just have a pair of mechanics gloves in there next to that in this pouch here i have a whole bunch of different things i have a flashlight pretty powerful flashlight this is a nova t2 next to it i have a ust blast match and then next to that i have a benchmade 550 yeah 550 griptilian there and all of these have lanyards so you can pull them out really easily if you need like i said a folding knife or a ferro rod or a flashlight they're all just conveniently located in this pouch here so next to that i have two sets of ammo for the shotgun of course those who are wondering what this is we'll get to it more in depth in a few minutes but this is a shotgun so i obviously have ammo for this shotgun and that's what all this is and in here i have around 10 rounds of 20 gauge this is a 20 gauge shotgun for those wondering or i'll get to it more later but these are 20 gauge rounds these are just very basic just game shot these are like number six they're not quite bird shot they're a little bit more stout than that but these are just game shot for squirrels rabbits uh, ptarmigan grouse whatever there's just game shot essentially and so that's pretty much what makes this up. There is a rain fly in the bottom of this. I don't think I would probably be using it much, but if it did really start to rain, I need to cover this entire setup, you know, entirely. And I want to prevent the backpack from getting soaked. I could throw on that rain fly and that would really help. Okay, so now flipping around to these two side pouches, as you guys can see, there are two different side pouches. To cover this first one, it may seem kind of obvious. It obviously has a bright red zipper, so that means medical, and this is where the primary medical stuff is carried. So in here, I have a bandana behind this IFAC, and then I just have a normal IFAC here that has all the medical necessities that you'd need for more serious injuries, things like serious cuts, bullet wounds, anything like that is covered amply with this IFAC. And then of course, like I said, I have a bandana running behind it because bandanas are super useful and have like a million purposes. And once again, it just slips so nicely behind the IFAC that's like, that's clearly where I'm gonna put this. So that's what's in this red zipper pouch. And that covers the entire pouch because that IFAC is a little big. So now switching over to this other side, one moment. Now switching over to this other side, you guys can't really see it that well. But now switching to this side, this is the gray zippered side. And in here, this is primarily where all the ammo is. So starting off, I have two Glock mags for the handgun. Of course, I'm running a Glock. And I'd know that these would probably be running on body if I was actually carrying this setup. I'd probably have those on body so I could more easily draw them out if I had to. But in here, I have more game shot, just a bunch more game shot in here. But in here, I also have slugs, and these are full on 3 8 out, 3 8, or sorry, not 3 8, 3 quarter ounce deer slugs and these are primarily going to be used for taking down things like moose or other large game animals or possibly in a defensive situation. Another thing I have in here too is duck shot shells or shot shells that are specifically meant for duck. These are number two shot. These are three inch, uh, as you guys can see, three inch magnums. These move pretty fast. And the reason why I threw a few of these in here is because the interchangeability of uh, duck shotgun shells where you can kill things like grouse, squirrels, hare, uh, rabbits and all those things with these shotgun shells but you can also kill um, ducks with these as well so they have a dual purpose and they're a little bit more amped up and powerful than a normal game shot and of course they're shooting with these in particular it's number two shot so that's significantly bigger than number six shot and a uh, little bit more powerful 
So the next to that is just a awesome handy Bible. This is a military version. And the reason why I carry the military version is because of its size. I'm gonna pull out some of the shotgun shells so I can put this back in here. But this is the full Bible and I prefer to carry the full Bible because I found that it fits well in this pouch. And of course, I always like having the complete Bible instead of just Psalms, uh, Proverbs, and the New Testament. But either way, I'm carrying a full military Bible and that's what I'm running in here. So that's all that I'm carrying in here. It's just ammo in the Bible. So now on to another pack. Okay. So now on to this kind of clamshell area. And in here, generally, I always carry, and in this setup, it's no exception, but I generally carry paracord. So over here to this left side, or this right side, depending on how you're looking at it, uh, there's just little bits and bobs of paracord of different lengths in no specific order. That's just kind of different little pieces of it. And then in these three areas right here, you guys can't really see it too well, but in these three areas right here, I have 50 foot spools of different colors of camo. So this is just straight red here, but I also have woodland camo and desert camo, depending on what I need or what application I'm trying to fill for the paracords. Uh, I have different colored camos and different colors to help fit those. So that is all that this, clamshell area holds is just paracord there's also some more green paracord underneath these spools but i'm not gonna pull out the spools and everything to get that out so basically there's just a bunch of paracord all throughout this little clamshell area so now into this top pouch right here and in here as usual is just my fire kit and overall this just has a bunch of different fire making kit gear in it and kit and if you guys want to see i'll have a link in the description below where you can check out or i might just link the video actually as a card but either way i'll have a video of the going over what's in this fire kit but that's what this fire kit is and it's just a whole bunch of different ways of starting fire in addition to that i also have a bow drill spindle here and once again that just helps add to the ability of making fire, which is still the primary thing. And I think with a lot of different kits, people try and go really heavy on like the combative side of things, but just be forewarned. And I mean, this is all subjective and due to personal opinion, but in my personal opinion, there probably would not be much fighting like person versus person. It would be really more fighting of nature versus person. And so that's why this kit is a little bit more survival oriented is because as always, I think these kits are really going to be, if you were in a serious WROL or bug out situation, you're probably gonna be fighting more with the elements than people, especially where I'm at. If you live in the city or the heart of New York, that would be a little bit of a different scenario or a different statement, I think. But being that I live where I live, we already live so much in nature that it's primarily just gonna be a fight between you and nature. So as I mentioned, this is the shotgun. This is just a basic single shot 20 gauge shotgun and how I have this set up is my backpack has different um, loops for holding different things as you guys can see like this here and so I just have the barrel looped around this and that's holding this barrel in place and steady right in the center of the backpack and of course right here is the buttstock slash receiver of the shotgun and then around somewhere in here is the handguard of the shotgun. Anyways, now getting into the other parts of this. So this is, and I'll also have a link or a card somewhere for this, but this is my PSK or personal survival kit. This would likely be running on my belt as well. This, once again, I'm not gonna go into it in this video, but just holds the very basic survival necessities that I want to have or need to have for surviving. And I use that when away from the backpack itself. In addition to that, these are 85% wool socks. I'm running these just in case I need replacements or if my, so ah, if my socks get soaked or for whatever reason, I need an extra pair of socks. Socks are very important because in a survival situation or a bug out situation, you are probably going to be doing a lot of walking. So you wanna keep your feet in the best possible shape that you can. So having a nice pair of high quality wool socks is very important. 
So next to that, I have a stainless steel pot, as you guys can see here. This is for cooking. This is an MSR Siegel, just a small pot for cooking small meals. And once again, probably would use this in conjunction with the fire box or the bush box that was already mentioned. So also with cooking, I have a stainless steel Nalgene. This is a 38 ounce stainless steel Nalgene. Once again, could use it to cook food or primarily boil water. As a tag team with that Nalgene, I am also running my Glacier, my GSI Glacier, my well used and slightly abused GSI Glacier stainless steel cup. And this would also go with all the cooking and making coffee, stuff like that, that's already going to be done in the woods. So next to that, I'm running the tarp, and this is a UGQ, or Underground Quilt Company, Winter Dream 11, all-season tarp, and I really enjoyed using it, and I think that this plus the other tarp that I'm about to show, plus the sleeping bag would make a killer combo or killer setup for sleeping. And it's a lightweight, very compact, very man portable setup that can also be taken down, put to, put up a very fast, as well as it can be taken out very fast. And that's primarily what I wanna focus on with a sleep system is having it be highly portable, highly effective, and leave no trace, basically. So of course, the next part is the mylar slash tarp, kind of just tarp. So it has this tarp side and then a mylar side to it. This is a really awesome tarp and I've been enjoying this at first when I first got it. I thought I'd really only use it in the winter because of the mylar side, but I've actually been turning out to use this quite a bit in the summer too, because the mylar is really nice to reflect uh, the heat away from you. So you can use it as a two-toned kind of thing. In the winter, you can use it to keep the heat coming, reflecting back to you. But in the summer, you can use it to reflect the heat away from you, which is really nice because we've actually been getting some pretty hot days here in Alaska, like in the 90 aboves. So it's really nice to have the mylar that reflects heat away from your body. Anyways, now we're just down to a few basic other things. So lastly, I have the Silky Big Boy for a saw, and this is going to be really nice. Saws are very quiet, very efficient at doing their woodwork, and I really chose, or I chose this over something like an axe because of its portability and its effectiveness at doing what it needs to do. So lastly, all that's left in here is just the three components of the shotgun, obviously the handguard, the lower receiver slash buttstock here and then the barrel. And I'm not gonna take it all out because it's all nicely put in there, but that is just the shotgun as a whole. Okay guys, so now finishing up this whole bug out bag with the front side of this pack. Of course I do have a water of course I do have a water bladder running in this system and that holds a hundred ounces of extra water. That's nice and it's not always guaranteed to work out and you know be there in the long run but it is nice to have and certainly helps the situation whenever you can get it. So aside from the water bladder, I also have a, this is a recycled firefighter lanyard setup for just clipping things onto the front of the backpack. Hope you guys can see that. And then I have an SWC SAT navigator on this side for keeping track of mileage or distance. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking this quick look at my bug out bag for an Alaskan scenario. I think this is a little bit of a different setup for especially the people who live in a more metropolitan area. I think it would be a little bit different for you guys in particular, but I know for me, especially being in Fairbanks, Alaska, where there's not really a high dense population here, uh, for the most part, I don't really think having many defensive options is really necessary just for the fact that the chances or the opportunity to come up against individuals, especially aggressive individuals, is going to be very low. So that combined with the fact that we're kind of already used to living a semi-rural lifestyle here in Fairbanks, I think a bug out situation would be more like how this pack is set up or a proper bug out scenario would be more how this pack is set out. 
and I definitely have a few defensive options like the Glock and specific ammo for the 20 gauge in case I had to go up against aggressors. I'm certainly prepared for it with this setup, but at the same time, it's something that's not at the forefront. I'm not running around with an AR-15 because AR-15s are not really going to do that good a job at killing things like hares, squirrels, and you know smaller game animals grouse ptarmigan i mean they're going to kill it but they're going to obliterate it at the same time so primarily the focus with this bug out bag has to be more on utilizing the land utilizing the resources around you and surviving more than fighting off aggressors i do think this would be different if you were in a more metropolitan area someplace like new york or California, a place that has a much higher and more dense population, you would probably have to worry about fighting off people a lot more in those types of areas. But once again, this is just my perspective and my thoughts on a bug out bag and how I would have mine set up if I had to have, or if I had to use a bug out bag, this is how mine would be set up. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this, and if nothing else, hopefully you've learned just a little bit about how you can improve your own setup. Anyways, guys, that's all for now, and I'm out.